One of the best parts about this hobby, and indeed one of my favourite parts about it, is creating custom colour schemes because any miniature that you paint is always going to be a very personal experience because you put your creativity in there and even a little bit of your soul as you're painting a miniature, even with a given colour scheme. But if you make your own colour scheme as well, then what this does is takes up to the next level and you're expressing a personal part of you in those miniatures. It's really fun to do and it's really exciting as well. And in this video, what we're going to do is show you my process of how I go about creating a custom colour scheme. This is going to start out with some inspiration of where you might take it from and then how that leans into a little bit of colour theory and selecting the paints you're going to use. And then of course what we need to do is to paint that test model. So a really fun and organic process doing this. And once that's done there's then just those little finishing touches just to tweak it to make it perfect and just how you want it to be. So anyway without going on too much let's get to it. Inspiration for a colour scheme can really come along at any time, anywhere, in all sorts of different ways. So for example, you might take it from like a movie or a video game or even a story. Really, it can be anything. And so for me, when I was 11 and I first got exposed to 40k, inspiration hit me because I was a massive fan of Star Wars and I didn't know a thing about 40k. So when I first saw these Space Marines, I thought to myself, they are like a combination of Stormtroopers and Darth Vader. So unsurprisingly, when I started painting them, I painted my Space Marines white and the Chapter Master was in black. Now this soon evolved into more of a 40k feeling thing. So things like the hazard markings, I applied them because I thought they looked really cool. But it grew more into 40k as I learned more about it. So you can see how it would start with quite a simple premise and then start going in a way that, you know, we didn't really expect it to go. And this can also happen through other ways. So for example, you might see some miniatures and think to yourself, that's a great opportunity to try painting with some colours I don't often use. This happened for me with Stormcast Eternals when I first saw them because they have lots of metal on them. So I thought this is a great way to start painting with more metallics than I ever use and try and use them in different ways as well. And then the bits pack came along with the round shields and I saw those and thought, well, they look like ancient Greek shields. So this then twisted me in a completely new direction as I started leaning into Greek myth. So this inspired the monsters I'd have in my army and the militia I converted as well, who look like hoplites, all that sort of thing. So you see, it starts with one thing and suddenly goes a completely different direction. It could be as simple as just a paint that you like using. So with my carriage on overlords, that's what happened because I really like the paint Cantor blue and I wanted to paint an army with that was the main colour. So that's what I started doing. And as I learned more of the lore of the faction, that's where I started doing little variants to get the different troop types like the Grunstock ones. So again, just a paint can get you going. Now, in the case of the Leagues of Votan, the inspiration here happened when Roger and I first saw the miniatures and we started discussing, you know, how would you paint them? Because all we saw was the Great Ethereum League colour scheme. And so at that point, it's quite a blank canvas because you don't know what the alternative is going to be. But what we thought was those round helmets that they have look a lot like astronaut helmets. So what if you painted them like classic astronauts like from the 80s, you know, with that a sort of orange undersuit and then the white helmet and things. So we'd have white armour, orange undersuit. That looked pretty cool. So it's a good starting point. But what about vehicles? Vehicles. If they're just orange, isn't that too much? But then it occurred to us that this is also sort of like rebel pilots, you know, with the white helmets and the orange suit. So maybe the vehicles could be grey with like red markings on for squadron markings. And then they'd have that link with the troops because you'd see the pilots in the bubble cockpit. So the orange is still going to be there. So you see it all starts tying together and starts taking us to go, oh, we could do all these extra things as well. So it's really fun. It's really something that we got excited about. And so whenever inspiration hits you in this way, definitely recommend that you embrace it. So you've got your inspiration and you know loosely what colours you want, but now it's time to pick exactly what paints you're going to use. And for this, what we need is just some simple colour theory. And actually the first bit of this is to pick up a rule of thumb that I learned when I was working in the Games Workshop studio. And that is to pick a first colour for your army, then a secondary colour, and then a spot colour. And by spot colour, what I mean is something that's going to be for small details that can appear across all the miniatures. And what this does is helps tie everything together. Now you'll see this frequently on Games Workshop armies. So for example, the Adeptus Custodis, the first colour on them is going to be gold, the second colour is going to be red, and the spot colour is going to be that blue that appears for their blades. And this appears frequently on Games Workshop Armies. It's quite fun to look it up and see it play across the different forces they have. But in our case, we know what those first two colours are going to be. So it's going to be white and orange, and we need to pick exactly what paints they're going to be for that. Now, when it comes to painting white, we can't start with a pure white for the mid-tone because it's got to be an off-white so we can move up to a pure white for our highlight to get that nice feel to it. So we need to pick an off-white to begin with. The one I've chosen for this is Trooper White. 
notes. And that's this one just here. And I've chosen this because it looks like a pure white. But if I get a pure white, so I've got some white star here, put it next to it, you can see it's actually slightly off it, which means we can use the pure white as the highlight and we'll still get that white feel. So I'm happy with that. So we're going to start out by putting this on the palette. Now for this, what I recommend you do is get hold of a wet palette because you can see it's not quite white here, which means if I put this paint onto here, what I can see is the actual colour it's going to be, which means I can start comparing as we go along. So there we go, we've got our first colour. So then what we need to do is choose our orange. And for this, I know the kind of feel I want to go for is sort of like an artificial kind of colour here. So I picked out two from Citadel's paints. I've got Troll Slayer Orange and Fire Dragon Bright. Now we could use Fire Dragon Bright as the orange colour on our miniatures, but if we do use this, I know from here, it's going to start going into almost bone colours for the highlights. And I want to keep that sort of artificial feel and use orange as the highlight highlights here. So I think what it needs to be is Troll Slayer Orange because then Fire Dragon can be the highlight. So I think it's going to be this. We can try this then on the palette. So what we need to do is just put it next to that white. So here we go. What I do is just get a dollop of this and apply it to the palette as well. And now what we can do is start spreading these out so we can get a good visual idea of what they're going to look like together. So just bring that down there like that and do the exact same for Trooper White. Just make sure it's nice and clean first. And then here we go. So there we are, that's our combination. That's the main thing that we're looking at there. So I quite like how those go together. What we now need to choose is what our spot color is going to be to go with these. Now, when it comes to the spot color, I know a good starting point here would be to take a look at a blue because on the color wheel, opposite to Troll Slayer Orange is gonna be sort of like a slightly aqua bluish sort of color. So Araman Blue is actually really good for this. So that's what I'm gonna try first of all. So let's just grab a little bit of this and pop it onto the palette with these. So there we go. I just put that there you can see the combination. Now that is actually a really nice combination of colors, but if I try and visualize that across the army, it's not exactly what I'm looking for because this spot color I'm gonna be using for things like markings, that sort of thing. And I want more of an industrial feel to it. So I think actually going for a red is more appropriate to the kind of scheme I wanna go for. So I'm gonna try a little bit of Mephiston red as well. So I've got some of that here. Here we go. And we'll just try putting that on there as well. So Mephiston red, I'll put on top of it there like that. So again, it's in between the two and that's a bit more like what I've got in mind for the sort of feel I want to go for for the army. So if you imagine that red, that's going to be squad markings, hazard stripes, just sort of things kind of like that. And I think that's more of an appropriate color for the feel we want to go for here. That said, the blue does look really good too. So I'm sure we can find a use for that. But So we'll keep it in mind. But we now got our three colors chosen. So now what we need to do is start painting a test model. With our colors chosen, we can now move on to painting our test model. And for this, all you need is a regular trooper from your army. So just a bog standard soldier. You don't want to go for a character here and you certainly don't want to try painting the entire squad at once because if something goes wrong, you're going to waste quite a bit of time and have quite a bit of heartache as well as you have to try and fix things. So just a single soldier will do to form the bedrock for everything else. That's what I've got here, a standard Hearthkin warrior who are built up with a pistol and a knife. So we've got lots of opportunities for different details just here. And with models like this, because we're going to be spending quite a bit of time painting it, if you're anything like me, you'll become a little bit attached to these figures. So don't be surprised if they start to become the last guy in the squad to die when you're playing games and things. But anyway, what we need to do with this now is start to work out a plan. And this is what I like to do first of all, just a loose plan that we can follow to start to lay the colors in. This starts with the undercoat. And I know from experience that painting orange is very difficult over darker undercoat colors. So we kind of need to use a lighter one here. This goes hand in hand with the white arm we're going to be using. So it makes sense to go for a white or an off-white undercoat. So what I'm going to do is go for some Wraithbone, which is an excellent starting point for the colors we're going to be using. So here we have our undercoat. And so now what we can do is start out applying the colors. We're going to start out with those two main ones. So remember, I've got Trooper White and Troll Slayer Orange for this. And I'm going to start out with the white, so it can be quite rough with that, and then neat with the orange. But this is going to be quite an exploratory phase where we're just working out where things are going to go. So on the fly, you might make some changes, might add some bits. So for example, what I'm looking for, first of all, is all the armor to be white, and then the undersuit to be orange. But I might change some things like making the helmet orange. We'll see how we go. But this stage is all about just working it out. So as I say, I'm going to start with the white, just roughly blocking it in, and we'll see how we go from here.
I've got those two principal colors blocked in now. And so what I'm gonna do is move on to applying some other base coats, avoiding that spot color for the time being. So I wanna come back later on, start to mark that in. It's not really important at this stage. But what I do wanna do is make sure I base coat all the more like mundane details. So things like stuff that's black, so silver, that sort of thing. So get all that blocked in there so we can see what the overall appearance is gonna be like. And I'll start out with the black, but I'm gonna be doing some silver and probably a little bit of gold as well. Kind of making it up a little bit on the fly really as we go in here. So we'll just see how it comes out. But as I say, I'm gonna start out with the black for these details, like the boot and things like that. Well into those base coats now and so far so good. Really happy with how it's looking at the moment, but Roger just come out with a great idea and that's for the faceplate. And he suggested doing it like a pale gold, you know, like how astronauts have with that visor that comes down to protect their eyes from the sun. I think it might look really cool on this, so we're gonna give it a go. So I've got a pale gold, I've got some glistening gold. I'm gonna give it a try and see how it looks. And there we are, we've got that gold on there. We think it looks really good. And well, we've also finished blocking in all the main base coats. And you can see how it's laid out now. I'm really happy with that. So I think we're ready to move on to the next step. Now, of course, we've not yet put on the spot color, but we'll come back to that later on. Before we do though, what I want to do is get everything really nicely embedded on here. So the next thing to do is going to be to wash it. Now for that white and orange, what I want to use is a brown wash, but straight out of the pot's going to stain it too much because these are quite bright colors, you see. So what I'm going to do is dilute it with a medium, and then we can move on to the ones after that. But first we need to get this mix ready. I've got a brown wash here, it's battle mud wash I'm using. I'm going to dilute it with some medium. I want to make it quite weak here. So it's some Lamy medium I've got. I've got two brushfuls. I'm going to start bringing that together. So I'm looking for something sort of like that will do. So quite a weak wash. And this is just going to go onto that white and orange now. And what I'm looking for is to make it almost like slightly ivory in tone. So we're looking to get it to about that sort of strength there. And I think I'm going to bring it over the gold as well. With that done and completely dry, now I'm going to move on to a black wash. And this is going to be for everything else in the miniature. So all the belts, all the silver, everything like that to give it a nice clean finish. With those washes done, I'm now going to do some layering to clean things up. And we're looking at the main two colors here. So it's going to be that white and the orange, of course. So I'm going to layer using the mid-tones, starting out first with that white. And then moving on to the orange. That layering's done and you can see it really cleans up the white and the orange. So we're really happy with that at this stage, just like how we imagined it really. And well, with that done, we can now start thinking about the highlights. And for this, remember, I wanted to go for a pure white for the white. So I'm gonna use some white star. Then for the orange, what I want is that nice bright orange using some fire dragon bright. Beyond that, it's gonna be sort of as we go along really, we've got the, the blacks to do the silvers. So I'm gonna be looking at things like grays and lighter silvers, that sort of thing. We'll see how we go. All those colors are highlighted and I'm really happy with how it's looking. But of course, as mentioned, there's a spot color and we've not yet put it on. So what we're gonna do is apply that now. And remember, it was gonna be a red. So what we're gonna do is look for some areas where we can apply the red to it. But also, we've had a thought as to where we could use that really nice blue, so that Araman blue, and it's perfect for a few details too. But what we're looking at for the red, first of all, is adding a few patterns onto it. So I'm thinking of some stripes. I'm thinking on the helmet, maybe just up here, on the shoulder perhaps, also maybe some of the chest. Could do a little bit on the gun just there as well. But for the blue, it's perfect for the blade of his little knife just down here. So that plasma effect, I'm mean, gonna do that on there, I think. But it's also a great color for doing things like the little lamp on his chest. And there's also the little screens back here on the arm. So I think that's how I'm going to be using those. But first of all, what we want to do is add that red on here. And this is gonna be a Mephiston red, and this is gonna be a little bit of free handing here. So this is one of those things where it's all about just brush control really and making sure the paint's thin down. So what I want to do is just add those little bits of water in there just to make sure it's nice and thin. And then I can start off adding these patterns on. And I know first of all, I want to have it on the helmet and also the shoulder plate. So I'm going to do those first of all, and then just see how it progresses from there. So I'm going to be starting just around about here, just very carefully applying it. I 
I've finished applying those colours and here we go. The model is pretty much finished at this stage. And uh, well, thinking back about exactly how I've painted it, I think there are some changes I'd make if I was painting a squad because I think I can make things a little bit more efficient. So it's still the same colours, same techniques, just a bit of a different order. But overall, I'm really happy with that. Now, for your miniature, now would be the time to make any adjustments that you want to make until you're happy with it. And then we can move on to those final details. We're now ready to look at those finishing touches and these are the things that are really going to allow you to add more character to your model and lean into the theme for them. And in the case of the Leagues of Votan, they look to me like they're wearing mining gear, but they just picked up weapons when they have to fight. So I want to sort of embrace that a little bit by doing some weathering on the miniature. And that means things like chips and scratches to make the armour like it's really used, a little bit of dust, that sort of thing. Now for the chipping, what I'm looking at is going into the red markings that we did and also a decal that I've added since. And this is really going to make them look like they belong on the armour, they've been there for a long time. To do it, what we need to do is just go to the colour that we used for the armour, so in my case that's Trooper White, and all we're going to do is just use this to start kind of cutting into them. So we don't need very much of this. What I'm looking at is things like the number five we've got here on the shoulder plate. What I'm going to do is just very carefully use the tip of the brush just to start dotting into it a little bit and a few little scratches going across, so just little things like this. After this, we can take it a little bit further using a dark colour, and you can see this allows me just to etch into some of the armour plates too, just to, again, give the impression of that chipped, worn equipment. I decided I'm going to add some dust as well. In this case, because I want to go for almost like a moon-style base here, I thought a little bit of grey dust would be perfect for it, so I'm just going to lightly apply it around the feet. And here we have the completed Huffkin Warrior, and, well, all we've got to do now is think of a name for the faction. So as you've seen, doing this kind of thing is really fun and reflecting on how we did it here, I think I'd change around the order a little bit as to how exactly I laid the colours in there to make it more efficient. But I definitely stick to the same colours and the same techniques as well. And thinking ahead from here, I'm actually really excited about what an army might look like with the elite troops in slightly different colours, you know, mixing around how exactly they're placed on the miniature. And the vehicles too in grey with some red markings, I think would look really, really cool. Now remember, inspiration can strike at any time in any way. And if it hits you, I definitely recommend that you embrace it because doing this is really exciting and also at the end of it you'll end up with an army that is completely and uniquely yours so it's a really fun and exciting thing to have together. Now remember if you enjoyed this video as well be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and also in the comments be sure to post any colour schemes that you've created and what inspired you for them and also if you've got any names for our colour scheme here be sure to put them down there as well because we'd love to hear it. So anyway have fun making your colour schemes and we'll see you again very soon.